Yes, Pika, it is true. I am super delicious. Hey there, Eric O'Sullivan, Reverend Sully, the irreverent reverend of all things geeky, the anti-pope and guru of Xanadum, ordained on the internet. How you doing today? Uh, the caveat, as always, please do not burn your hands holding on to my hot takes if you do. Well, that's on you, pal, gal, or anywhere in the great spectrum of humanity that you reside and identify. Welcome. It's time for the Sunday Sermon. Hi there. It's Happy Sunday. Um, I found this old notebook. Check it out, man. 4, 10, 11. That's from April 10th, 2011. Uh, 11 years ago. It's from ongoing file under the, the Tao of Sully. T-A-O. Tao. Chinese word as in uh, the road. The spiritual road we walk. I used to blog a lot, and I had this thing, uh, a hash brown called the <laughs> the Tao of Sully, which was um, evolved from something earlier I called God walking, uh, which was I wanted. I like making words up. I mean, I like writing, and um, shit. I was also the unfortunate, the giver of unfortunate nicknames that sometimes stuck. Uh, yeah, I mean, she, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I like to make up words. So yeah, God walking. And I had it in a, in a minor G in a lowercase G and it was a gerund and I made that up and it's supposed to say everything and just been the term itself and the hash brown, the hashtag, the octothorpe of uh, God walking. It was supposed to be about, um, walking the road and, um, of spirituality. Uh, it was on um, 1998, March 31st, 10 minutes before April Fool's Day, I became an ordained minister on the internet. And I, I performed four wedding ceremonies and a few uh, naming ceremonies for infants for people who have kind of grown out of their the faith and tradition that they grew up in. And I offer a spiritual... Uh, thing. One of my ex-girlfriends, uh, the naming ceremony of an infant's, uh, uh, one of the infants, and from, uh, she grew up in Texas, and she didn't grow up Catholic. She would grow up some kind of former Protestant, of course, uh, if she wasn't Catholic. <laughs> but um, I forget I forget her denomination, but um, she said, oh, that was a blessing. And I'm like, oh, okay. That was, and uh, that, because you know, I had the robe on, and I had the little book and just like you make the speech and we did this it was the um instead of having godparents we had seven spiritual guardians it was a beautiful occasion thank you amy thank you jeff <laughs> and thank the kids too um yeah so i just wanted to actually just go through this notebook for a few minutes and uh just a couple of things from the first page now i was going through a very difficult time in my life um I, you know, that, that girlfriend I had mentioned and I had just, you know, we had broken up a couple of years before and she had just come back to Boston to, uh, to go to school, to grad school. But, uh, I decided on brahmacharya for a few years, which means to consciously give up, um, dating and sex for, um, for, for spiritual energies. I did that for four years. I grew my hair out. I went to the uh, spiritual mountaintop. Um, if you're a comic book fan, you'll know that this is something that King Mob did in Grant Morrison's DC Vertigo, The Invisibles. Went to the mountaintop and got a mantra. I am as cool as Bruce Lee. I am as cool as Bruce Lee. I am as cool as Bruce Lee. And I've stolen that mantra. And, um, but yeah, Sundays. And, uh, I used to wear this shirt every Sunday. Uh, this was given to me by... Dell's Coffee Roasters. No lie. Seriously, Dell's Coffee Roasters. Uh, one of my close friends, Dell. He's a drummer in many bands. He's a awesome dude, and I'm blessed to be gifted with his friendship of him and his family. And I've known them for years now, and I've got to see his, his, his boys grow up. And that's a wonderful thing. And he's got a great wife, and... Um, and he's just, he's very optimistic and, uh, he created this coffee roasting company, uh, just a few years ago 
after he was let go from his uh, full-time job, which he was doing really well at. And he put all that energy into his own company. So, yeah, I mean, support independent music, support independent comics, and support independent coffee roasters, too. Once you have the, 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 the taste of a freshly roasted bean, oh, it's hard to go back to something a bit, like, you know, more second level. When something good is wicked simple and very easy and easily obtained. Their boys, they were out shopping one day, you know, at a Target or a Walmart or whatever, the whatnot. Uh, the boys, so they were kids then. This was several years ago. They were they were children. They're you know, they're teenagers now. Um, they saw this and thought of me because I was the brunch chef. I worked at a, a very popular local restaurant for seven years. I was the brunch chef. Um, it was so, on Sundays, I would go to the Church of Hungry People. Why? Because I'm foolish like that. I'm an ordained minister. I'm a spiritual guy. I'm an amateur theologian. I live a spiritual life. I worked Monday through Friday, you know, basically 9 to 5 at my at my union job. But it was not it, my, as, as a chef. And I had felt like I put myself out to pasture after this engaging, dynamic life of a restaurant cook. But I felt like, you know, there was just, I put myself out to pasture. And uh, so I got a Sunday job. I really didn't need it for the money, but the money was nice. Um, but I had a key and I had the, the chef owner's confidence in that. And for seven years, I slung the hash in one of the busiest brunches in my, in my, in my little town, in my city. I live right outside of Boston over the river. Uh, I've lived in Somerville and now the Somerville area, uh, the general area of, uh, of, of one of the many squares and hills of this, uh, which is right next to Cambridge. And I work in Cambridge and, um, and I grew up in Boston and South Boston on the other side of the river. So, um, this is like, you know, being part of a local restaurant like that and having great standards, and making great food, and serving my community, my literal neighbors every Sunday, fulfilled me as an ordained minister. I was literally going to the church of hungry people, where I can feed the Lord, which dwells inside of your soul, and in my guest's soul, and in my soul. And that is the unit of experience. And it was very, very, very um, fulfilling. And I started working there around this time. Uh, I stopped working there in uh, 2019, so that's seven years. So I would I, I would be getting this job in, uh, in a couple of months. So I was starting to uh, uh, to reform my, my spiritual goals around this time, and I the Bhagavad Gita became a big part of my life. So around this time, I am I, I've read the Deepak Chopra version, and. Um, I had just, I was about to move. I had just left a uh, um, the restaurant for uh, to work at the uh, daycare center, and um, and I was working at nights at uh, where I eventually would work. I got a I scored a union job part time, and that became I put that into a full time job, and um, but I was going through a really hard time at that time, and. The, Bhava, uh, the Bhagavad Gita became uh, the rudder in my life around 2011. And that's when I was exposed to it through Tipak Chopra's um, Sacred Verses Healing Sounds audiobook, where he read to me the first four chapters and then the, the ninth and tenth chapter uh, and then the eighteenth chapter. Um, it was abridged, but uh, it got to the point. And especially with his lovely elaborations, too. I'm a big fan of Deepak Chopra. If you're feeling down, you know, read some Chopra, please. I mean, I, that's a, he helped me. He was one of my great mentors in this road. And my Tao, in the Tao of Sully. So um, this is ongoing. File under the Tao of Sully. Notes, musings, inspirations brought on by the Bhagavad Gita. Gandhi translation. So at this time, about this time, I'm on my first printed copy of the Gita, and it's uh, the it was the Gita according to Gandhi, uh, literally transcribed um, by Mahatma Gandhi himself, annotated annotated by him himself, and it was a wonderful experience. 
again, that was just uh, transformative. It was a transformative experience reading. So I went from Chopra to Gandhi. And then later on, after I got my head around passage meditation written by this guy himself, Eknath Aswaran, um, the passage meditation book is just, it was, gave me the, uh, gave me the ability to plumb that foundation with, with, with mantra. And, um, and then I got this three volume study version of the Gita. So this, I was literally writing this every day. I had, this was in my backpack and I would probably be writing this on the way to work where I would have to be toiling. I just got my full-time job um, there, so I'm, I had trouble fitting in with my coworkers. Um, and I was bullied by, by, by the lead cook mercilessly because we just like, I, you know, I had come in with this restaurant skill set and this guy's trying to force me to cook his way. And I'm like, and he would be, yeah, let's just not talk about that. That resolved itself over time. And that is a story for another day. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I worked in a toxic and rare environment and um, I probably already contributed to him too, being a pan throwing brunch chef. You know, that's the shadow of being, you know, uh, you know, I've, uh, working in, as an emotionally charged chef. Yeah, it's, it's a, it's, it gets really busy and you put your, you put a lot into it being a line cook. Yeah, so yeah, I wore this on a lot of Sundays. So the, yeah, the Dells bought me this shirt and they gifted it to me and um i wore it every sunday while um while setting up and then when we would open i would put on a, a, a my chef whites you know but before so you can make you make a mess cooking your ass off between 7 a.m until when the doors open at 11. i mean everyone else came in at eight i would get there an hour early to you know kick the tires and light the fires you know i had the key that's what i was there for and um, make sure, because it was a huge Sunday brunch, huge popular restaurant. It was my honor to sling that hash uh, and walk with giants. Um, and I mean that cutely. I mean, we were just um, badass line cooks. And it was a, and a bad, and, and in the real restaurant culture, too. I mean, this is just, these were true blues. I'm true blue. I have, I, I sling the hash. I got it. I mean, it takes, I mean, like, I'm at an age and I have a union job where it's like I don't have to work at that pace and expectation anymore. We have a very, it's a very, um, very organized, easier way. And uh, I'm very grateful for being a, a union chef. Thank you, Krishna. Thank you, Krishna, for everything. But let's get this to this real quick. I mean, I don't want to go on too long, but I wanted to bring up a couple of these. And it's like, and I got cha I got a structure here, a chapter, verse, the date, with with personal personal. I can't even read my, reflection and, and and then elaboration. All right. It's hard for me to read my own writing, too. I'm a, such a slob. I mean, I used to mumble. One thing I like about YouTube, and I have to watch my speech. Um, I have a pretty bad Boston accent when I want to. I also mumble. And I'm grateful for the ability to do something about that. I, um, I mumble fiercely. I will get overexcited and start to talk pretty quickly and I will, and it will be undiscernible. This grand idea I've just had and shared with you. Huh? I got that a lot. So, I mean, I speak very, <laughs> all, everything I've learned from TV and, 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 and other YouTubers, I apply here <laughs> with the way I speak because sometimes I can speak wicked local too. I really can. But let's uh, do a few. Okay, so on November 13th, 2010, um, I had wrote, wrote this earlier, I guess. Yeah. Um, it was at, so, so it's, this is chapter 18, uh, uh, chapter 18, verse 53. And I'm going to read it. I'm going to read that chapter to you. We're going to chapter verse this just a little bit in my study. But, you know, so yes, you're using a different Gita. Yes, I'm using a different Gita. 
No, it's the same Gita. It's just this is a different translation. It's the same, it's the same mark. Let's see. Okay, 53. Here, I'm going to read this. Okay, let's see. I'm going to read this in just a second. I'm going to see if, like, so should I, I should tell you. This is, yeah, this is, this is Krishna speaking himself to Arjuna. But not just to Arjuna. He's also speaking to Sanjaya. Sanjaya is the blind regent's um, right-hand man. And Sanjaya reports to Didish Rashta. I mean, yeah, I'm going to, I don't want to butcher the names in any disrespectfully. I should know this name by heart. Um, but the blind regent needs everything explained to him. So he's got Sanjaya. And so not only did Krishna give Arjuna the, the divine sight and the message, he gave it specifically to Sanjaya, who wrote it down because it's about Sanjaya is really the narrative vo uh, the, the the narrative caption and of the of the of the the Bhagavad Gita this sliver of an epic war poem so we have uh dearest Rashta talking to Sanjaya sometimes at the beginnings of the chapters being like oh Sanjaya tell me what you see over there these two battle these two uh these two warriors uh clans about to meet in this battlefield of my family and Sanjaya responds, well, over there I see the, you know, your sons, your 99 sons led by uh, um, the evil minded one. And there what stands with him are also forces of goodness because this is how the battle just arranged. And uh, over the, uh, across the battlefield, I see your, your nephews, the rightful heirs, the Pandus. And uh, they go on like this. I'm digressing. I'm sorry. Um... We let's get to this. <laughs> oh man, just imagine if I was in a room full of people right now. We'd probably have to make a fart joke to to to, to get a giggle out of everyone. Just to, and move on with it. Free from self-will, aggressiveness, arrogance, and the lust to possess people or things, he is at peace with himself and others and enters into the unit of state, which I say makes me feel as I just began this journey. I am so far from this ideal, yet, dot, 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 an ellipses. I would, I would interpret hope out of that. <laughs> I would. I do, and I have. I mean, that, that's a really, really good way to look at it. Now let's look at uh, on 11-18-2010, the day before my birthday, the day before my 38th birthday. I'm 37 at the time of this writing. Uh, it's uh, chapter 2. Verse 31. Now, chapter 2 is beloved to me because that's where my, uh, my mantra comes from. Is uh, chapter 2, verse 14. Well, let's look at 31, where we're doing here. Okay. Considering your dharma, you should not vac vacillate. For a warrior, there is nothing higher than a war against evil. This is Krishna talking to Arjuna. But as I said... Sanjaya can see and hear everything. And he's relaying everything that Krishna says to Arjuna. Sanjaya is saying to the blind regent. And so, yeah, the Gita as the artifact of Sanjaya's observation that he was gifted the divine sight by Krishna as well. So when Krishna slows time down and shows the... Um, the multifaceted true form of the Lord. He not only gives he not only gives Arjuna the ability to see, he has to give Sanjaya that too. So Sanjaya can describe this. I see you with many mouths, with many teeth, uh, with many limbs. Um, you know, all all the all the combatants of of this battleground are already in gnashed in your teeth. You know, and uh, with knowing knowing this, Arjuna, pick up that bow and slay the forces of ignorance. Ah, these beautiful words that, you know, inspire me, but not what we're talking about right now. I put it down. Gee, what the heck? I... Yes. Consider your, yeah, consider your Dharma. Yeah. And, um, personal translation is there's no higher good for a chef 
than a righteous service. Service being capital S, meaning the day of, you know, your, your work day. My day, my I, I can describe my work day as service to another chef and would culturally, contextually be clear. Oh, which service was it? Was it breakfast service, brunch service, lunch service, high tea, supper, late snack? What kind of service were you were you doing? Um, these are all, and you can say, and by 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 categorizing that, you can just get instant context. Like, oh, oh, oh you know, it's a institutional knowledge. Yeah. And next one is from eleven twenty two twenty ten November the twenty second. Uh, chapter three, verse four, chapter three, verse fourteen, where it is written: "Living creatures are nourished by food, and food is nourished by the rain. The rain is the water of life that comes from selfless action, worship, and service." And I just got you know, so service has a cleverness in here. Krishna is clever as well. Krishna has a sense of humor. Um, but it's like that just it wasn't in, you know the, the the English word of service being the, the the crux of it. I just said that service is being contextual to a chef. You know what I mean? So we now we have a different usage of the word service, yet it still applies. So I'm going to say I, I just have a quote where I quoted from it: "From food springs all life," and that's a huge part of what I do. And how I identify as I'm a chef, but as a chef, I get to live my role as an ordained minister. I get to serve the Krishna that lives within inside of you, and of any guest that, on many of the thousands of guests and individuals of every persuasion and, uh, and on this wonderful spectrum of humanity that I literally feed and serve during a work week, during my service, I get to the joy of serving Krishna. And um, so this fulfills me spiritually. I live in Dharma. I live. I. 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 You know, I, I am Arjuna. I am the the Kshatriya, the warrior on the battlefield, the holy battlefield of Kurukshetra, which is my kitchen, and the marketplace. Namaste. And um, I'll end this with one more from six. This is this is scribbled down on November the twenty fifth. Uh, 2010, and uh, this is uh, verse uh, chapter six, verse six. Execute order 66. It was way before Plaid Palpatine was a glimmer in the clone pool. <laughs> chapter six, verse six. To those who have conquered themselves, the will is a friend, but it is the enemy of those who have not found the self, the self within them. And I got, I quoted Stan Lee, Stan the Manly. Enough said with one of my winks. <laughs> and um, yeah, I mean, that's all I got for today, I guess. It's been my Sunday sermon. And um, yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. It's just been a... It's Sunday, and we're talking about spirituality and spiritual things. And thank you for coming to my service today. I am Reverend Sully, the irreverent reverend of all things geeky, the anti-pope and guru of Xanadum, ordained on the internet. And uh, we've been getting spiritual. And uh, thanks for tuning in. And if you lasted this long, hey, I'd like to earn your subscription. Give me a thumbs up if you could be so kind as well. Uh, I make cooking videos. I'm a professional chef, as I've said all throughout this video. So you can find there's a uh, the What's Cooking playlist and just help yourself to anything. And uh, share pictures if you make something beautiful and delicious and nutritious. I'd like to see. And I make pop culture videos. I talk about comic books a lot. And that's all I got for today. Oh, and I just dropped my, my clipboard. That's okay. Well, I was reaching for my coffee. Didn't spill it. Mmm. Darn good cup of coffee. And I'd like to thank the Delmonicos. God bless you. I love you guys. And I and I feel truly loved because this family is just part of my life. And uh, they can be part of your life too. You can order his beans. I'll put his link in the description below. Uh, but thank you so much for tuning into Sunday Sermon. God bless. Cheers. Namaste. Good luck. And um, if you're feeling 
awful. Um, if you're feeling self-harm, go out and get talk to your doctor. Get some help, please. Um, get a referral. Talk to somebody. I mean, uh, antidepressants can help. You know what I mean? They do. They, they, I, I can t I can attest to it. I mean, sometimes you need a panic pill. It, you're a grown up. You 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 have help out there. You know there is help. Um, and also, you can make a gratitude list and read that gratitude list later in the day, and it's gonna change. The, your energy uh, if you're having a bad day you can just read your you can stop that bad day by reading your gratitude list you can continue to have your bad day but chances are you can change the, the direction from your from a bad moment into a better day by reading your your gratitude list a little later on in the day if you're having chronic mopes or chronic sadnesses or chronic angries I I do and it's a gr good way to, to ground yourself and to center yourself. Thank you so much. <laughs> pancake man has a pancake plan to be a pancake gal, to be his pancake pal. Pancake man has a pancake plan. He's a pancake man. He's a righteous man. He's a pancake man, not a flim flam man, but a pancake man. <laughs> that was the little song I would sing to myself wearing this t-shirt. God bless you. Thank you so much.